Good evening, everybody. My name is Linda Campana, the director of this program, and I'm very uh, pleased to introduce tonight's speaker because um, Ezio Vergan is a dear friend of Stanford University, an alum of Stanford University, and also somebody who is uh, very much involved in what is going to discuss tonight. He's one of the people who practices what he preaches, and so he will tell us things having experienced them firsthand. Let me introduce him to you. I'm, I'm going a little slowly. We've taken a few minutes. We have a group of students coming back from an event. And, uh, and so uh, we apologize. We're a couple of minutes late with the start. Ezio Vergani attended the executive uh, program at the Stanford Business School. After earning his degree in mechanical and bioengineering from the Polytechnic University in Milan. He then joined his family company, Binder Pompe, which designs and manufactures specialty pumps primarily for the oil and gas industries. During his time as acting CEO of the company, which was from 1987 to 2009, Mr. Ver Mr. Vergani's company grew substantially internationally. In 2008, he sold the company to a private equity company under Goldman Sachs. After two years as a retiree, Mr. Vergani decided to buy two companies back from Goldman Sachs, both of which still deal with the oil and gas industries. One of our former students, for example, uh, uh, who studied here in the fall 2013, worked uh, at an internship at one of Mr. Vergani's two companies, Asco Pompe Engineered Systems, just this past summer. Um, in addition to his career, volunteer work has always been very important for Mr. Vergani. He is a co-founder of Intercultura, which is the largest Italian association for student exchanges, so he's very much, as a volunteer, very much in the same business as we all are. Uh, he chaired Intercultura from 1970 to 1991. He's also a member of the board of the American Field Service International, a nonprofit volunteer driven exchange organization. He has also served as chair of the Stanford Club Italia, the Stanford Alumni Club in Italy, which is rather big and uh, has its main base in Milan but it's actually a, a, a national, it's a national club, it's a club in Italy. He's also presently the chair of the board of IES abroad in Chicago, and he's also the chair of the AFA Foundation in Zurich. So thank you very much, Ezio, for having accepted my invitation to come speak to us tonight. And the uh, topic of the talk is Italian industry, a success story. So this is a very positive outlook uh, which we all want to hear about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I didn't realize I've done so many things in my life, <laughs> but uh, uh, well, tonight I'll, uh, I'll try to give you some data uh, that may go against uh, some of uh, what you read in uh, the newspapers and the media in general concerning the Italian industry. Well, because whenever I talk with uh, my friends in the States or abroad, and we talk about the Italian industries, they start thinking immediately of tourism, of food, and fashion. And instead, uh, uh, instead uh, you will see that there is something else in, uh, in, uh, in our country that is quite interesting. Uh, this is a bit the outline I will follow, and I will start with the opinion of the European Commissioner on Italy, which was uh, written on the 29th of May 2013. You will excuse us a few things in Italian and English, but uh, I have tried to get data uh, that uh, are independent. Come most of the data will come mostly from the World Bank. I try to avoid any data coming from. Uh, Italian you know, organizations or associations. So, let's see what the European uh, Commission said on the 29th of May of two years ago. Uh, Italy has the second highest debt to GDP uh, ratio in, the, in, uh, in uh, Europe, and this is true, it 
towards 127, then it's 132 and mounting you know, uh, uh, right now. Um, uh, we will see about that. And then the second uh, report is uh, interesting. Uh, practically says that the Italian industry doesn't know what it's doing. That it's uh, the level of uh, uh, another developed country or an emerging uh, country that, though, you know, if they consider China as an emerging country, probably, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that, that's it. And, and that we don't do any kind of innovation. Okay, let's start looking at, uh, at the debt. Um, we have a big debt, it's true. Uh, you see Germany, Italy, France, uh, uh, United Kingdom, and then the crazy acronyms PIP. So there stands for uh, uh, Portugal, Ireland, and Greece. I don't know why, but these are uh, the people of the European Commission. It's not me, you know, so it's, uh, if you look at, uh, at the absolute or the, the absolute value of the debt, uh, Germany and Italy are more or less at the, uh, more or less at the same level. The point is that the GDP of, uh, of Germany, of course, is higher than ours. But then it's not that far from France, and France and Italy more or less have a three percent difference in the GDP, and, uh, and the United Kingdom is the same. So. Uh, well, we are in bad shape, but the other ones are not doing great either. And then we have this uh, benchmark that I don't like very much, but uh, all the, the uh, European banks consider that extremely important. I don't know why. Frankly, uh, they say uh, that uh, uh, there is no risk of a default of the debt in a country if. Uh, 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 the foreigners own less than 60% of our debt, of our uh, BOTs, you know, our bonds and so on. Uh, don't, ask me, don't ask me why this is uh, considered a, a general rule of, uh, the, of the European banks. And you see, we have, uh, we have a big debt, but we save a lot of money as Italians, so we have big savings in the banks, we buy our bonds a lot. So the foreigners own, own only 45% of the Italian debt code in Denmark, for example, in Denmark, Germany, EU, uh, Deutschland is 50% a little higher than us. So I'll, uh, I'll just uh, give this as a reference so that it's used by the financial people. And, uh, and let's see also Italy versus the Euro area versus the United States from 95, the blue lines, to 2014, the red lines. Of course, we doubled our debt, but the others didn't do much better either. Um, so, the, uh, the last, this is, that is an Italian slide, done by the Ministry of the, uh, of the Economy and Finance. And uh, this is done with uh, idea of showing that after all uh, we have some virtues in the sense that the primary balance of, uh, uh, of Italy has been very good and po almost positive every year. You know, you see only in uh, 2009 we had a negative value. Um, uh, compared to, you know, uh, other, but what is the primary balance? The primary balance of uh, all income less all expenses except interest rates. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we have a big deficit that continues to grow because we have a big uh, interest, uh, the value of the interest that serves uh, the loans of our debt are very high. The, what the Ministry of Economy and Finance does not say is that we obtained this value without cutting any expense, but raising taxes, which uh, succeeded in uh, cleaning up the cash from the families and from uh, the industries in the country. So if I were uh, Mr. Padoan, I would take that uh, slide away from, uh, from <coughs> immediately. But, so the, con the first conclusion is that after all, the European Commission is right. We have a big debt. Uh, we didn't do much to uh, 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 reduce it, but uh, the European community for, forgot and forgets 
to tell us how we welcome the, the students that uh, are coming from uh, a visit to Fiorentina, right? Yes. Uh, someone that knows me is laughing because they know that I'm a fan of Juventus, which is uh, <laughs> the big enemy for you, for us now, because uh, we almost win every game against Fiorentina. So. <laughs> almost. 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 I was expecting other, other kinds of reactions from the Latino. So, uh, going back to the, what I was saying, that uh, the European community is right when it says that uh, we, they forget to tell us that we should cut costs instead of uh, uh, increasing taxes. Uh, why? Probably because the politicians you know, do not like to uh, fight so much against each other. And they forget to mention um, the, what we call the Sistema Italia, the environment in which we work. Uh, and by environment in which we work, I mean uh, our bureaucracy, our judiciary system, uh, our labor laws, our infrastructure. And they forget to compare them to the standards in Europe. But let's have a look at that. And again, we will see uh, Italy from the eyes of someone that lives outside of the country. I, uh, now you need big, uh, big glasses to see this. But you can uh, get on, online on www.doingbusiness.org. And this is, uh, um, again, the World Bank that says uh, that, that, uh, uh, what, which are the rankings um, throughout the world, and especially from the point of view of ease of doing business. Uh, I don't know if you see it. Number one is Singapore, which is respected in many ways. Uh, then we have uh, Denmark, uh, Norway, the United States, of course, the United Kingdom, uh, Australia, Switzerland, the uh, Netherlands. And where is Italy? These are the first 30. Where is Italy? We are the eighth or ninth, depending on how you count that economy in the world. Where is it? Number 56. Mm. Number 56, and especially the reasons of uh, this bad positions are two or three. One, uh, um, dealing with construction permits. Uh, I see some Italians here that are nodding because I imagine they have just like I have lots of bad experiences about it. We are ranked 116th out of the almost 200 companies in, in the UN. Then uh, getting electricity, again, uh, um, you know, just for, as an example, I tried to um, uh, switch um, the, the electricity in, uh, in the house we have in Elba Island from my father to me. Uh, my father passed away in 1996. Uh, I succeeded uh, three years ago to do the change, <laughs> but uh, uh, still, they, instead of my address, they sent it to my mother's address, you know, which, uh, you know, this is one of the examples. Uh, getting credits is very difficult, 89. Uh, again, uh, the people that have been working with the banks know that uh, we are full of uh, a lot of regulations. And uh, uh, probably the two most interesting things are paying taxes and uh, enforcing contracts. Paying taxes is not the fact that Italians do not pay the taxes well, which is you know, also true because we have a lot of uh, uh, underground economy, as, as you call it. But uh, it's the ease of paying taxes. And we'll see that in the slides later. Um, and, uh, and we are 147 instead in enforcing contracts. This means uh, that our judiciary system is uh, not efficient and very slow. And I need to get some water because otherwise I will not uh, continue.
with my voice. Bureaucracy in Italy. Um, let's forget the protecting investors that uh, is more interesting probably for people like me and so on, but paying taxes. The number of payments per year are 15. The time, I don't know, they calculated it because, uh, well, I don't know, and since the time the taxes are so complicated that usually have my consultants that are doing it, so I don't deal with that. But 269 hours, just 10 days, just to fill up all the forms to pay the taxes. And the total tax rate is 68.3%, which means that we Italians work till, uh, till from January to September in order to pay our taxes. And then, uh, you know, for the remaining four months, we can enjoy the money that we get. Enforcing contract, 41 procedures, 10 days, 1,210 days, and the cost of the claim for the people that, that try to enforce it is 30%. These are uh, the, especially this last one, for uh, uh, us, uh, you know, in business, uh, practically compel us to avoid going uh, to court and to find always a transaction. It, it favors practically the people that do not behave properly and fairly. That's, that's the result. The cost of labor. Again, good eyes here, huh? you, you need good eyes. But uh, Italy is, uh, you know, this, this is done by the European Union. 42.8 is the cost. Uh, we share the top with Belgium, but just to give you an example, a socialist country, as we say to it, like Denmark, 34.4%, which means that in Denmark, a company has an advantage of eight points compared to us in anything that relates to labor. And again, enforcing the law, this uh, probably you can see this a little better. Italy is over there. Um, it takes twice in Italy uh, as in France, uh, three times as, the, as uh, Germany. Uh, I don't know many times as Denmark because Denmark is uh, close to zero. This is another um, very uh, important inefficiency in the system, as I was saying before. And this is instead from, uh, sorry for the INF, for the word, uh, okay, addressing. The, the, uh, they have a yearbook that relates to uh, the competitiveness uh, of uh, a country. And they do it for the 60 most important economies in the world. And bureaucracy, we are 57. Interesting, huh? Legal uh, framework 58. The lawyers are happy because they have a lot of work here, you know, to do with uh, mm -hmm. laws like that. We are very bad also in parallel economy. This is something we cannot uh, overlook. Uh, the parallel economy is the underground economy, even because, according to uh, talking with some of the computers, especially, a lot of it relates to. Uh, um, uh, non legal activities. And, uh, and, and this is something that is not good for a country. Absolutely. The water transportation, uh, well, you know that in Sicily, um, <coughs> the, the, the amount of water that starts at the source is uh, twice the one that gets to the taps of the people. And that's because of uh, lack of investments or uh, uh, lack of uh, good management, probably. Uh, the energy infrastructure is bad, and the electricity cost for us, for the industries, is uh, we are we are at 54. So again, a disadvantage compared to uh, you know competitors in around the world. 
And labor regulations, of course, we have 55. Now, probably with the Rexy's uh, Jobs Act, we may get up to 53, 52, something like that. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. And then infrastructure. I, I just uh, uh, show you this picture of uh, uh, the area around Milano, because it's the one uh, that uh, I know the most. Uh, and uh, you will see uh, the Pedemontana. Uh, it's uh, the, well, let's say first of all that all the existing highways uh, go radially into Milan, which creates a, a big mess every morning. Uh, I know that because I have to go to the Tangenziale here every day. Uh, so, uh, way back in the 90s, uh, we, the, the government or uh, the region or whatever, designed the Pedemontana, which goes practically north of Milan. Uh, this one that connects Brescia and Venice uh, directly to Milan. A second uh, um, um, a tangenziale beltway, you know, larger than the first one that is the one over here and this uh, little little connection. This was, uh, all this was, uh, they started to discuss it in the 80s, uh, in the 90s it seemed that everything was going very well. The result is uh, that this one is finished. Uh, this one will be finished, uh, hopefully, for the opening of the Expo 1st of May of, of this year. Uh, the Pedimontana, only this, a little thing from Como to Busto Sizio are uh, uh, under work, and we don't know when it's finished. No, no news about this part. And the interconnection is, uh, we, we don't know, it's probably lost in uh, the cyberspace. Also, uh, in 99, I attended an interesting meeting at the Swiss consulate in Milan about trains. You probably know that Switzerland uh, has built by now the largest tunnel, the longest tunnel for the railways uh, under the Gotthard Pass. It's 56 kilometers that will connect practically um, uh, Zurich to Milan, in, and now it's uh, four hours and two hours and a half, something like that. They started it in '96 and they said that they were going to finish it in 2016. It will be finished by the end of the year, a few months in advance. Swiss uh, way of looking at things. But is there a part uh, built by the Italians too, I think? No, uh, the Italians have to, uh, have to do the 43 kilometers from Como to Milano, because in, uh, uh, the, the Swiss are saying, okay, we are building this tunnel, uh, all the trucks that go from Italy to Germany uh, are not going through our roads anymore. They will be put on trains and will be taken uh, by train to uh, the border with, uh, um, with Germany. So in order to comply with it, and in order to avoid to have about uh, 8,000 trucks per day crowding the town of Como, uh, which doesn't have a lot of, I mean, the, I don't know if you've been there, but there's a lake and the mountains and a few roads in between. In order to avoid that, we had to build 43 kilometers of railway uh, in order to connect with uh, the Fiordaliso, the Fiordaliso, the, um, an area in Milan where the, the trucks can go easily into the trains. I don't remember exactly the name now of the place. Uh, well, we're still discussing, should it go uh, through Malpesa, which is over here, should we go straight, or should we go through Marese, it's over there. We are discussing. And in the meantime, the Swiss are ready. And I, I don't know what will happen next year in, in Como. It will be a nightmare. <laughs> so probably, at this point, some of you may ask, but why do you do business in Italy? <laughs> uh, and I asked I ask myself, especially because I live about half an hour from the Swiss border, so it would be easy for me to, to do something over there. And uh, the answer that I give myself and I share with you comes from my stay in Stanford. 
a millennium ago, when I was in the US series. And uh, we had a great professor of macroeconomics, uh, Professor Bach, who was an elderly gentleman at that time. And uh, I loved his lectures. And during one of those lectures, he said to the class, at Harvard, which of course is inferior to Stanford, we will come back. <laughs> at Harvard, uh, they say uh, a good company is made by uh, good products, good finance, and good people. I tell you, start with the good people first, and everything else will come along. And I always followed in my career this. Uh, uh, the, 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 this uh, opinion of, uh, of Mr. Bach. And uh, I have to say that we had companies in uh, Italy, France, uh, Denmark, uh, Israel, China, a uh, lot of contacts in the States, that uh, what I value most about uh, my country is uh, uh, the people that work for, the company, for our companies. Uh, the quality is exceptional. And uh, if you succeed in, uh, in uh, taming the individual aspects, uh, or, you know, the Italians are so individualistic, so if you tame it but not suppress it, you keep with it with the light. And you succeed also in showing them that it's uh, great to work as a team and to reach consensus rather than, uh, uh, you know, um, coming up always with your own personal opinion, you get amazing results. And if you don't believe it, I'll show something to you now. Again, World Bank. The six G6 countries, which are Germany, Italy, China, uh, in fact, the Germany, Italy, uh, Japan, France, United Kingdom, and United States, plus China and Korea. Who is uh, ranking number one? Who is uh, ranked number one? In most cases, Germany, as you see there. But Italy is not so bad. It's first and second mm -hmm. in a lot of places. Let's see. In uh, wood and paper, we are not so good. Textiles, we are number one, as you would expect. Uh, leather products, well, we are employees, so of course we are number one, as well as clothing. But then, basic manufacturing, we are number two. Non-electric machinery, electronic components, transportation equipment, so on. So, from uh, uh, this slide, I would say that our economy looks much more like Germany than uh, anything else. Uh, of, of course, even China is pretty strong in these areas, but also Korea. But these are companies, uh, countries, and Japan. Look at Japan as well. Uh, is this underdeveloped or emerging world, or it's uh, the, the, the top notch uh, or the state of the art in, in, in industry? This is probably what the European community does not understand. And let's look at, at some other, um, some other uh, statistics. Uh, top 10 products in which we hold uh, the top spot for trade balance. Here, a strong trade balance only if you are a state-of-the-art product, you are competitive, and the quality is great. Otherwise, you don't sell all over the world. <coughs> And you see, of course, we are in footwear, uh, you know, shoes and so on, but we are also in helicopters. We are in uh, some pipes, stainless steel uh, material and so on. Uh, sunglasses, of course, uh, you probably know. But it's, it's an array of uh, um, market segments that tells you that we are strong and bit everywhere. And we are number two also in uh, gas turbines, for example. And this makes me very proud because uh, taps, stocks, the valve, and similar pumps, uh, for, uh, especially for the oil industry, we are number two only to Germany. And 
number and number three, uh, we are jewelry, motor parts for vehicles. You know, it's it's really a little bit of everything. It's not that we have just one or two categories in which we excel. Again, Germany, Japan, and Italy. In other electronic machinery, this is the year 2013. Um, it, it, it's recurring, you know. However, you look at it, the, it always comes up with, uh, um, with Italy in, in one of the top positions. And what people don't know much about, we, we are very strong in, uh, uh, in pharmaceuticals. Um, this was a little bit of a surprise to me, even though I'm, I know very well Mrs. Bracco, the Bracco. Uh, I felt that this was the only strong Italian company in the field. Instead, uh, we have been, we are uh, really, along with Switzerland and Germany, at the top of, uh, of the production of, uh, of these uh, uh, pharmaceutical elements. So, that uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, we have a lot of uh, excellence uh, in uh, different segments of the market of the country. But I, I would not be fair to all of you if I don't talk a little bit about of our country. That there's two states. We have the north and the south. You know that very well. And, uh, and I uh, brought some data here where they took the Lombardy, of course, because it's a region where I come from, and Sicily uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, because it's the largest region in the south, but also because we had a, a little joint venture in a little town here called the Cela, uh, that we did with a young entrepreneur who wrote, who was one of the 10 interviewers of the book uh, No al Pizzo, uh, that translated in, in English, not to, no to the money given to the mafia practically. Mm -hmm. We established the company there in 2000. Now it has a, a small, uh, 32 people, uh, manufactures a line of product that we sell all over the world. Um, we never had any problem with the uh, mafia, but we didn't get any um, help from, you know, we have uh, the funds for training, for example, and, and so on, and tell you the story because it's quite interesting. We did the training at that time for 18 people. We brought them uh, to the north, to Milano, and we showed them how to, uh, to, to assemble and manufacture the pumps and so on, and then we sent people down there. Our, you know, in our area, we are not used to ask for, we don't ask any, any money to anybody. We just go ahead and do it because, uh, you know, in the end, we don't get it from you, neither from our government nor from the European community. But they say, oh, we have lots of funds over here. So. And, uh, and so that um, uh, our partner convinced us to do the application within the application to Jela Sviluppo, Jela Development. And after a couple of months, he called me and said, uh, I don't have the good contracts because, you know, they approved 25 of the 26 applications and they rejected ours. Hmm. And he said, uh, well, probably you have the right connections because, uh, you know, uh, in that area, uh, especially the, the politics and, uh, and the mafia go a long, uh, go a long way together. And uh, I said, ah, but you do not understand because I even gave uh, the money to a company that had made an application for two people working in a sex shop. <laughs> uh, so, um, well, this is what happens over there. But again, you can look at these uh, the data maybe later on. Uh, what I just want to point out is a big difference about uh, unemployment. In Lombardia, the rate now, while well, in Italy is 12.2 and in Europe is 11.6 or something like that, we have 8.1 in Lombardia and 21 in uh, Sicily. Sicily. While in, 
uh, for the, the young people up to 34 years of age, it's 14.8 in Lombardia, which is normal, physiological, I would say, and unfortunately, it's 30, 38.3 in Sicily. That means that the students like you that have come out of school do not, do not have a lot of possibilities. They have to go out of their area in order to, to find a job. Well, this is, a, I hope that I gave you a, uh, an idea about uh, Italy and its industry. And I would, uh, as a conclusion, I would like to tell the, the students here that if you ever decide to go into business after your college year and you want to become a manager in the future, make sure that you spend a couple of years in Italy. Because if you are successful here, you'll be successful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Questions. So, maybe we'll have a note. We can go around with the mic if there are any questions. Yes. Thank you for an excellent talk. Uh, at Harvard, they talk about the solutions as well. Uh, yes. Just a little. Uh, well, I, I know, I know. And we have two Italians at Harvard. Uh, uh, Giavazzi and Arisina that frequently arrive on Corriere della Sera mm -hmm. and they give a lot of uh, indications, uh, especially to Mr. Renzi now. Uh, I think it's easier to give indications rather than to do them because uh, uh, I imagine I'm not a politician, I'm not in the politics, uh, but I imagine that uh, our Prime Minister now, like the Prime Ministers of the past, have to find compromises because of the, the composition of, uh, of our Parliament and uh, because also the composition of its own party. But yes, uh, our... Uh, so politics is the main problem? Uh, well, uh, people say that the politicians uh, represent the people that are voting for them. So I think it's partly also our culture. Uh, my personal opinion, very personal, is that uh, uh, politics is a problem, but the two main problems are the bureaucracy, because the politicians change by the, by the directors of the ministries have been sitting there for ages. Mm -hmm. And they go, uh, even, even when they uh, retire, they get uh, unbelievable, uh, you know, contracts to stay and, uh, and the mentality doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And they have a mentality uh, that uh, is not like the mentality of the Austrians or the Germans. Their mentality is that uh, um, the citizen is a dangerous person unless uh, proven otherwise, <laughs> and, uh, and and this is uh, this is uh, you know uh, when I uh, we set up a, a a sales office in in the states, I went to the consulate in Milan, uh, and I had to sign some papers and so on, and 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 I had to give also a couple of papers that were done in Italian by the municipality of my little town in Brianza. And uh, I was amazed because uh, when I, uh, I had to translate my birth certificate, for example, and I had to attach a paper that said that um, uh, Mr. Ezzelergani uh, translated, uh, uh, said that he knows English and translated this document at the best of his capacity and in fairness. I found that absolutely incredible compared to what we uh, I used to in Italy, you know. Ah, you take the comma here instead of there, so you have a big fine, you know. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, so that's one. And two, the, the judicial system. Uh, we, had a, we didn't have a lot of cases, right? We do not have, at the moment, we don't have any case. 
But we had one in 1996 uh, with a company in Padua that went into bankruptcy and so on. Well, uh, it started in 96, uh, the last hearing, and the final conclusion was in July 2012. Hmm. At that point, uh, you know, uh, some of the people involved were dead, some were dead, and it doesn't make any sense. And uh, we cannot work with this lack of certainty for justice. We cannot do that. And I see the big difference, for example, with France. Not, I, you know, not to mention Norway, the United States, or, uh, or Germany, or Switzerland, and so on. In France, it's a totally another example. Um, one day, uh, in, in August of a few years ago, we received a letter from a madame uh, that uh, said, uh, I've been, uh, I, I'm a member, I'm an employee of the Minister of Finance, and I have uh, been in. I am in charge of checking your books for the past three years. So I will come on the 20th of December. I remember the date because it was just prior to Christmas. At uh, 2.30 exact, because the French sometimes, you know, they like to exaggerate on these issues. Uh, in order to um, uh, make a plan with you, so that I can do my job without interfering too much in uh, work with your work. In Italy instead, when the finanza comes, they come 50 people, they block everything, they treat you like a, you know, like, uh, whatever, you know, and uh, uh, they block your computers and so on, and they spend two months <laughs> and, and uh, like in the last case, at the end, uh, at that time, uh, you know, our sales were around uh, 89 million euro um, for a, a, a problem of about uh, 20,000 <laughs> on the line. The inventory, you did not consider this and this in two months for, for You know, that's, that's, a, a bit, that's a problem, the problem of, uh, uh, in relation, in relation to what you just said, uh, at the beginning you said a good company has to have three things. People you put them on the top, mm -hmm. uh, you put the people in the ranking number one, then you say great product, mm -hmm. and you say finance. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you talked about the problems in Italy, uh, if you can, if you, I would like you to rank number one problem, and uh, you just said the two, you said the judiciary system. Because I truly believe, uh, as a very young economist that study very hard all the, the books from all around the world, I truly believe that all the problems that we have in Italy are connected, but the very first one, it starts with the judiciary system, because when anybody in our country starts realizing that it's better to risk to go beyond the law, uh, about the law, for example, not only be a criminal, but if you see that you cannot pay a bill, if you know that in one week somebody like Madame would show up and instead of staying two months would take one hour and say, why don't you pay this bill, I will find you, you will make sure that that bill is paid. And if you pay one bill, then multiply it in the economy, at the end something works. When instead, as you say, from 96 to 12, 2012, at the end the Italians realize it's better not to pay the canon Rai because with the TV tax, because it's more likely that they will never come. So that is not paid. And an invoice, it's a thousand euro, well, maybe I don't pay because it's so little money. So at the end, the country doesn't function because there is no guarantee of protection. And a lot of my clients say to me, oh, my lawyer said it's not worth because it will take so long. And I, I say to my clients, no, you should pursue that invoice, even if it's 1,000 euro, because at the end, it will take you more years, but at the end, you will get your money. But the Italians have lost uh, their faith. So if, if, it's, uh, if it's correct, can I ask you again, what is, where would you start if you have a magic wand and you can, where, because the Renzi has too many things. But I think the judiciary system, it might be the, the, the right way to go. Uh, I, I tend to agree with you. And uh, talking about the Renzi, we will not touch it because uh, 
I, I think that the structure of the parliament at the moment will not, uh, will, doesn't allow him to touch it. And, uh, and now we, uh, uh, and then, uh, we, for example, we pursue any, any voice, of even a little one, because it's a matter of principle. Even though sometimes it costs us more to pay the lawyers than to, uh, than to get money, but it's, it's a matter of principle. Thank you. Hi, my name is Emma, I'm a senior at Stanford. And talking to a lot of my young Italian friends and all around the country, not just in the South, typically people coming out of school have some trouble finding jobs, and a lot of them are going to England, they're going to Germany, even the very top students. And I've typically said that the problem is you really have to know people to get jobs, that it's not at all a meritocracy. And so after hearing this and again and again, it seems like there's a huge inefficiency in that and that you're not fostering talent and keeping a lot of that talent. I'm curious your opinion on that and if you have any ideas of how to solve some of that. Well, how to solve that? I don't know, I don't know. Uh, but, um, uh, well, I can tell you, from my experience in business in my part of the country, if you have merits, you go on. If you are a friend of a friend of a friend, you may have a little bit of an advantage at the beginning, but you don't last long. Mm -hmm. uh, probably uh, that's more, uh, that point of view is more valid in, uh, in our in, in the state uh, organizations and the, the, the companies belonging to, to the state. Uh, I don't know. Uh, is that, um, you see, for example, in the, in the Jobs Act, I don't know if you read it, uh, that Mr. Renzi pushed through with a lot of difficulty, you know, of Parliament. Um, they did not dare to touch uh, the, the people that work uh, for uh, the ministries, you know, the, the, what we call the public uh, uh, workers. Uh, why? Uh, first of all, because they, they are so many, but, and they vote according to, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the people, uh, vote to the, to the, they vote in favor of the people that uh, support them. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult, issue, but the only way is to eliminate, you know, take for example the judicial system, you know that um, all our judges um, are promoted according to age, mm -hmm. no matter what they do. Yes. You know, they can do the most uh, incredible things and they still promote it. Sometimes they move from one place to the other, but uh, they are not kicked out. They call them not the punishment move them, yes, which in yes. some countries could be an advantage. Event. So it's it's one of our big problems. But um, as you saw or, you know, in the slides, it depends where you're from. In Milano, for example, if you come out of engineering of the Polytechnic in Milano, you get a job in two, three months. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends also the faculty, uh, you know, I can tell you that because uh, as an alumnus of the uh, Polytechnic, I look at uh, sometimes at the uh, statistics and so on. So it depends. Uh, many people who are, have a little more courage and maybe have been abroad before or studying abroad and so on, um, take advantage of their uh, language capacity and so on to go to England, for example, or other countries. You just mentioned engineering, and I have a question that's been bothering me since I've lived here in Italy. I've been here almost seven years. Um, for such a creative culture, I don't understand why the government or leaders in management haven't pushed for more of a software industry in Italy. It seems to me there's a lot of creative talent here. And I don't understand why it hasn't caught on in Italy. It's certainly big in Germany, in Belgium, in France, and the Scandinavian countries. 
Italy has so much creativity, and it could be used so effectively, especially in this area. Um, why hasn't the software industry taken off in Italy? Uh, well, uh, there are some, uh, for example, in Luca, there is a beautiful company uh, that has in, uh, designed uh, a, a software that is used by all the big companies in the States for the consolidation of the budgets right, and of, of the balance sheets. Uh, so we have some of these, uh, we have uh, uh, some interesting companies here and there. Uh, but I, I guess this uh, is due to the fact that there is no uh, venture capital available. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, if you want to have a loan, aha, uh -huh, this is uh, going to be uh, very interesting. There was a, once uh, uh, Mr. Bassetti, uh, a northern gentleman that uh, was president of uh, Lombardia, governor of Lombardia and president of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, he was invited to speak at uh, um, uh, the, the Banque Popolari, you know, and uh, he was uh, referring to the president and CEO there and said, uh, you know, it's very interesting because uh, uh, let's suppose that uh, we have this uh, uh, young engineer that works for, uh, uh, say, Fiat, mm -hmm. and uh, he sees that uh, he can do much more by doing something on his own and he decides to quit Fiat and uh, start his own business. So um, he goes home and talks to Mark and says, uh, you know, I'm quitting Fiat and I'm doing that. Ah, you're absolutely crazy. Why do you do that? You don't, uh, uh, you, you cannot do it. It will be a disgrace for the family. Okay? Then he goes on and says, well, I will talk to my fiance, my mother is a little old, you know, uh, let's see it again. And he uh, mentions that to the fiancé, the fiancé says, uh, ah, if you do that, I leave you immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and this is very stubborn, and comes to you, you know, the president of the bank, and uh, you present the project, and you say, oh, this is a wonderful project. Of course, uh, we uh, will be very happy to support you and to give you a loan. Now, of course, we have to deal with the collateral. <laughs> and, you know, so practically the banks in Italy give money to the people that really don't need it. <laughs> if you have a very good, a very strong financial position, you have uh, banks blocking, you know, coming and uh, say, oh, why don't you do this and that. But if you have a good idea and uh, no collaterals, it's impossible. I think that's it. One final question, yes. Or well, two final questions. We'll take those as well. You have the companies. You have the different countries listed at the top. And you have Italy and fresh food. I was surprised that it came so low. Then I couldn't tell if that was export or was it production. Because when I, unlike the U.S., when I eat things here and I look at where it comes from, it almost always comes from Italy. Where in the U.S., it almost always never comes from. It's never produced in the U.S. So I was curious. About well, uh, again, I, I, uh, th these are the World Bank uh, assessments, so I don't. I, uh, but you know, you have to consider the amount of land that we have for the production compared to Germany or France. Uh, and also, uh, one of the things that uh, really um, influence that value are the, the European regulations. Uh, we have quotas, for example, for milk. You know, we have quarters that are half of Germany, while the population of Italy is not the half of Germany. And this has been uh, some of the uh, political uh, agreements in, in Brussels. Uh, so that there is a limitation sometimes of that. But uh, anyway, it's disturbing to me as well, because I consider Germany a good place for mechanics, but not for books. So. Uh, to see the, uh, the Germans on top of the list was a little bit stuck. But they are uh, the greatest producers of uh, um, 
you know, and offer these things. Uh, so is most food that's grown in Italy grown for consumption of Italians or grown not as much for export? Is that, would that be correct? Uh, yes, but also, you know, if you take the pasta, for example, that's not fresh food. So now we have pasta everywhere in the world, but that doesn't count to that specific uh, statistic. Your final question. Thank you so much for your presentation, Mr. Gregani. Um, you managed to show so brilliantly how polarized Italian economy is. And I wanted to, to ask you, what do you think the prospects are for the future? So is it more in a positive or negative dynamic? Because in some of the ranks, it has the first and the second and the third places. And in some ranks, it is just at the end of uh, many countries. So what are the prospects for the future? And what do you think it is more in a negative or a positive dynamic? Well, this is a very tough question. Uh, I could. I could answer you with an aphorism uh, uh, by Mark Twain, who has said that, uh, more or less, I don't remember, uh, because I read it many years ago, he said uh, the art of prophecy is very difficult, especially with regard to the future. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, the interesting thing in our economy, I believe, is, uh, is that uh, uh, it's sometimes positive and sometimes, and sometimes negative. It's the fact that we don't have big uh, companies, but we have very large clusters of absolute excellence. In, uh, in our area, uh, and especially in our field, where you need to have top quality products, because, uh, you know, it, it gives you just an idea, a 50,000 euro pump works on a system that produces 50,000 euro in one hour. So you don't, don't want that pump to break down. So you need all the components and, uh, you know, starting from the stainless steel, castings, uh, mechanical seals, everything to be top quality. We can find that, you know, in the radius of 100 kilometers around the island. So we have these clusters and uh, uh, and they uh, sometimes come from nowhere. Like, uh, for example, in Veneto, all, when they started all the equipment for uh, ski, you know, and now all the ski, or not, not the skis, but mostly the boots and all the equipment for skiing come from Monte Belluna and a little So we have another class, cluster there. So the, uh, what I would uh, suggest that uh, to our politician is to try to develop, maybe with some venture capital, similar clusters in uh, areas of the South. Uh, the Napolitans are much more intelligent than the Milanese. Uh, take it one by one. Uh, then uh, two by two, uh, there's a uh, five by five, it's a, 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 a total disaster. So uh, uh, the capacity is there, we probably need uh, that and the elimination of the subsidies to the south. Because uh, with this flow of money that continues to go uh, as a subsidy, it, you know, without any specific project to, uh, and it's administered by the politicians of the south, we are not getting anywhere. Now we have been doing that for 40 years. And, and so if instead, if, uh, uh, there will be some uh, specific strategy of clusters, for example, from software and so on. Uh, I, I believe uh, that could be successful. Thank you so very much.